The movie opens with a man named Ali Amir, a Middle Eastern man, performing his daily routine. Suddenly, Ali is abruptly captured by US forces, hooded and transported away, signifying his journey to Guantanamo Bay. Later, Corporal Randy gathers the new guards, including Private Amy Cole and gives them a rundown of what to expect in their new environment. He emphasizes the strict protocols and the importance of following orders to maintain security and control within the detention facility. He stresses that the detainees are not to be trusted, portraying them as manipulative and potentially dangerous. One of the primary duties Randy assigns is the distribution of meals to the detainees. He instructs the guards to follow a precise procedure, placing the food trays through a slot in the cell door without making direct contact or engaging in conversation. A few minutes later, Corporal Randy receives a call from the other guards informing him about a fight in the jail yard. He takes Cole and other guards to help him get the prisoners back to their cells. Randy, being the more experienced guard, leads the effort to control the situation. Randy, Cole, and the other guards quickly get in the cell and try to apprehend the prisoner, but he manages to hit Cole and she holds her mouth in disbelief. Randy and the others eventually get the prisoner in cuffs and get him out. Later, after being hit by the prisoner named Ali, her initial thoughts upon getting home are filled with a mix of frustration, confusion, and reflection. She decides to call her mother, and she answers warmly, happy to hear from Cole. She responds with a forced cheerfulness, trying to mask her stress. Her mother asks about basic things like her living conditions, food and if she's making friends. Cole gives brief, positive responses, avoiding the depth of her day's experiences. She mentions the basics. Settling in, getting used to the routine, and adjusting to the new environment. The next day, Cole is assigned to a cell block, where her primary duty is to monitor the detainees and ensure order. She walks the corridors, her senses heightened, watching for any signs of trouble. She's given a new task, distributing books to the detainees. The facility has a small library, and the inmates are allowed to borrow books as a part of a program to improve their mental well-being and provide some form of education and engagement. Corporal Randy explains the importance of this task, emphasizing that while it seems minor, it's crucial for maintaining a semblance of normalcy and mental health among the detainees. She gets to Ali's cell and he asks for a Harry Potter book but unfortunately she tells him it's not in the cart, he asks for any other book that he hasn't read. He assures her that he has read all the books in the cart and asks her to get him another book. Cole is overwhelmed by him and demands him to choose a book, clearly frustrated. She gives him a book and Ali is seemingly enjoying pressing her buttons. He asks her to pronounce a word for him in the book and Cole tells him that the word is a place in America called Nebraska, clearly unaware of the place. He asks her to explain where it is but Randy walks up and she's forced to carry on with her job. The next day, the soldiers, including Cole, are being instructed on their responsibilities and the rules for handling the detainees. As the scene takes place in the courtyard of the Guantanamo Bay detention facility. Shortly she goes back to her duties as she is responsible for maintaining security within the facility, ensuring that the detainees are securely confined and that the facility remains safe. Ali on the other hand, tries to engage with Cole as he sees her as different from the other guards, who are often dismissive and harsh. He starts addressing her directly, attempting to build a rapport. But Cole tries her best to ignore him, Ali tries to establish a personal connection with Cole by asking for conversations and discussing topics beyond the confines of his imprisonment. He expresses his desire to be heard and understood, hoping to establish a more meaningful dialogue. Ali conveys his feelings of isolation and desperation. He seeks empathy and understanding from Cole, who is one of the few people he interacts with regularly. His goal is to make her see him as more than just a detainee, but as a person with thoughts, feelings, and a story. Seeing that she's not attending to him, Ali initially requests a bottle of water from Cole. Instead of simply accepting the water, Ali uses the opportunity to throw a mixture of his bodily waste on Cole. This act is to humiliate and degrade her in front of all his friends, Cole is visibly upset and disgusted by this action. After Ali throws waste on Cole, the guards take punitive action against him. The guards, including Corporal Randy, respond to the incident by spraying pepper spray in his cell to teach him a lesson. The next day, Cole joins Randy in the detainee management room. Shortly they're joined by Private Rico Cruz. Randy informs Cole that they have been moving Ali from cell to cell every two hours. This practice is intended to disorient and punish Ali further, making it difficult for him to sleep and rest. Randy mentions that the purpose of this tactic is to teach Ali a lesson. He casually states that they don't care about how Ali is coping with the constant relocations. Cole's initial reaction is one of discomfort and unease. She is visibly troubled by the harsh treatment being meted out to Ali. The casual cruelty of Randy's comment about not caring how Ali is sleeping adds to her growing sense of moral conflict. Later, the guards take a break from their duties, 
relaxing on a boat. Some of them are jumping into the water, while others are drinking and enjoying themselves. For Cole, it can also deepens her internal conflict as she grapples with the disparity between the carefree moments outside and the harsh realities inside the detention center. Randy offers Cole alcohol and insists that she loosens up. She then joins Mary on a ladies' beer opening competition where the winner is the one who cracks the can open first. She's soon congratulated by the guys and heads back to her room to quickly clean herself up. Shortly, Randy walks in and forces himself onto her. She eventually pushes him back and gets away. The next day, Cole returns to her duties at the detention center. She approaches Ali's cell to check on him, but finds Private Raymond inside instead of Ali. Cole, concerned about Ali's well-being, asks Private Raymond if Ali is still undergoing the punishment of being moved from block to block, cell to cell. Private Raymond responds to Cole's question, indicating the continuation of Ali's punishment. He confirms that Ali is still being moved around frequently as part of his punishment. He mentions that this is meant to be a lesson for Ali, showing the center's method of maintaining control and discipline over the detainees. Cole's reaction to Raymond's confirmation shows her growing concern and empathy for Ali. Later, Ali is returned back to the facility and is visibly drained by the entire ordeal as he's being taken back to his cell. Cole decides to snoop around in the office, driven by her growing concern and curiosity about Ali's treatment. She locates his file among other detainee records. Hesitant but determined, she starts going through the documents. As she sifts through the file, Cole comes across photographs of Ali injured. The graphic images clearly show the physical abuse Ali has endured at the hands of the guards. Cole reads through the written reports. She quickly realizes that the official reports are misleading, justifying the abuse Ali has suffered. These documents suggest that some guards are deliberately trying to break him, fabricating incidents or exaggerating threats to justify their actions. Later, Cole resumes her duty of monitoring the detainees' cells her mind still troubled by what she discovered in Ali's file. As she makes her rounds, she notices Ali intently drawing a pattern on a piece of paper. Ali senses her presence and looks up. Despite their past interactions, he tries to offer her the drawing as a friendly gesture, hoping to bridge the gap between him and her. Cole, torn between following the rules and responding to Ali's gesture, tells him that accepting the drawing is against the facility's regulations. Ali is visibly offended by her refusal. He feels rejected and dehumanized. His frustration and anger boil over as he confronts Cole, questioning why they are treated like dirt and subjected to inhumane conditions. Ali's voice rises with emotion as he accuses the Americans of being the true terrorists. He speaks passionately about how they took him away from his country and locked him up in the facility, stripping him of his freedom and dignity. Unfortunately, Cole can't help but feel empathy for Ali. His words resonate with the doubts and moral questions that have been growing in her mind. The next day, a group of detainees gather in a small, designated area within the prison for their daily prayers. Despite the confinement, they adhere to their faith and religious practices with dedication. The prisoners pray five times a day, following the traditional Islamic practice of Salat. This routine provides structure and a sense of normalcy amidst the chaos of their imprisonment. Eight months later, the atmosphere in the prison has grown even more tense and strained. The detainees, including Ali, have refused to eat for five days as part of a hunger strike. Cole is visibly distressed as she approaches Ali's cell, begging him to eat something but he refuses. As the detainees are protesting the harsh and inhumane conditions of their imprisonment. Later, Ali is placed in a cage outside for his exercise, a small respite from his confinement inside the prison. He kicks a soccer ball, trying to find some semblance of normalcy and relief. The physical strain of the hunger strike is evident on Ali. He appears weaker, but his determination remains strong. Cole watches over Ali clearly troubled by the sight of him in the cage. Her face reflects a mix of concern, empathy and frustration. As she cares about Ali and doesn't want to see him suffer. Cole, almost desperate, begs Ali to eat. She tells him that she can try to talk to the superiors about their conditions and treatment if he just cooperates. Ali listens but remains skeptical. He's been through too much to easily trust that anything will change. Cole's genuine concern and efforts to help reflect her vulnerability and growing attachment to Ali's well-being. After few minutes later, Randy calls her over, interrupting her conversation with Ali. Seemingly irritated by her engagement with the detainee, Randy questions Cole about what they were discussing. Cole refuses to tell him what they were talking about and instructs her not to engage with him. In the evening, Cole writes a letter to her superior, Drummond. She addresses the violation of the standard operating procedure she has observed. She's set with determination as she sits and types down her issues especially with Randy. The next day, Cole receives an order to report to Drummond's office. Drummond is seated behind his desk, exuding a stern and disapproving demeanor. 
Drummond begins by expressing his displeasure with Cole's actions. He accuses Cole of undermining the authority of the facility and of making problems where there were none. Drummond implies that Cole's report was an act of insubordination and expresses frustration that she has disrupted the status quo. Drummond scolds Cole for standing up for the detainees, suggesting that her actions were misplaced and disruptive. A few weeks later, after her confrontation with Drummond and witnessing the continued mistreatment of detainees, Cole comes to a harsh realization about her inability to effect change within the facility. She resumes her duties with a heavy heart, now fully aware of the compromises she must make. She focuses on her assigned roles, such as overseeing detainees and managing the facility's operations, without actively protesting or challenging the system. After deciding to comply with the rules, Cole is assigned duties that bring her into close contact with the mistreatment of detainees. She is tasked with overseeing and participating in the daily operations, Cole's inner turmoil is evident as she reluctantly performs her duties. Later, Raymond approaches Cole and gives her a letter. Cole's face shows a mix of shock and confusion. As she didn't expect to receive a transfer letter, especially after the recent events and her internal struggles. The realization that she is being transferred sinks in. In the evening, she immediately gets assigned to her duty of looking over the inmates, and gets called by Ali. She tells him to go back to sleep but he insists to talk to her. Cole is visibly bothered by the earlier news and tells Ali that she's being transferred, Ali is also bothered and asks her for more information but she's forced to carry on her duty until the other guard leaves. After he leaves, they continue talking and he asks her why did she end up working for the army guards. She refuses to disclose and asks Ali what crime did he commit, Ali insists that he was wrongfully arrested, and tried telling the army that they have the wrong person, stating that they arrested him because he's from the Middle East. A few minutes later, her guard partner for the night walks in and gives her coffee, she thanks him and he leaves. Cole tells Ali that she's being transferred next month, visibly bothered by the news, he asks her what is she planning on doing. Cole tells him that she's thinking of quitting and travel to another country. Realizing that he wasted his time with befriending Cole, he tells her that his people and hers will always be at war then walks away. A few minutes later, Cole discovers Ali with a blade, ready to harm himself. She is immediately alarmed and tries to calm him down, showing genuine concern for his well-being. Ali, holding the blade, expresses his profound sense of hopelessness and despair. He tells Cole that ever since he was brought to Guantanamo Bay, he has felt as though he has been unalive inside. Ali elaborates that being in Guantanamo Bay has stripped him of his humanity and his will to live. As he feels that unaliving himself would be an act of liberation, freeing himself from the relentless suffering and indignity he endures daily. She tries convincing Ali that he shouldn't unalive himself because she likes him, realizing that their feelings are mutual he gets emotional as he hasn't felt that emotion in a long time. She gets her hand inside and holds him tightly as reassurance that things will get better. A few weeks later, Cole begins to pack her belongings, her emotions are a mix of sadness, frustration, and resignation. With tears in her eyes, she feels the profound loss of leaving behind someone she considers a friend, despite the circumstances of their meeting. Make sure to like, and subscribe for more notifications. Until next time, see you soon.